Okay, everyone, so I just wanted to uh, kind of reiterate another video I did in the past um, about how to record your vinyl records to the computer. And um, I kind of discussed this in my other video to some point, but I never really walked you through those steps on how to do it too, um, too clearly. So I kind of wanted to just kind of remake that video and uh, just maybe walk you through in a different DAW. Last, last time I showed you in Pro Tools, and I don't think too many people um, you know, uh, average people out there have Pro Tools or can afford it, um, such as myself. So um, I've since switched over to Reaper, and Reaper is a great DAW and it's much more affordable. It's a $60 license for, you know, a long time license, and it's a great DAW. It does all, everything you need it to do. And anyway, it's not about the DAW, it's really just about getting the, uh, the process down of how to hook up your record player to your uh, audio interface and from your audio interface to your computer and how to maybe go about exporting these files to uh, audio files that you can listen to on your, on your uh, media player and um, things like that. So, Okay, so the record that I'm going to record, I'm not going to let you be able to hear it due to YouTube licensing problems and stuff like that but i'm going to record one of my most recent purchases random access memories by daft punk it's a pretty good album it has some great songs on here i love the lose yourself to dance and everybody of course has heard of get lucky and there's a bunch of songs on here that are pretty awesome but um it comes with a digital download so that's an mp3 uh 320 kilobits per second however the nice thing about recording to vinyl to computers you can record at a very high bit rate and get a really high grain recording of the vinyl I like to record at 192 at 24 bits but some people may you know might not have it in an interface that can record at that so you know 96 is fine or even 48 there's 48 96 and 192 I, I go right from 192. It takes up a lot of resources on your computer, but it's kind of worth it if you can, if your computer can handle it. So, okay. So here's my Project Debut Carbon turntable, and I have the Ortofon Blue Stylus. So the first thing you need to do is take off the cover. Okay. So here's the new stylus, and I wanted to uh, try recording on the new stylus. So this is going to be a good demo for that. Um, I've talked about this in my other video, but. This is the upgraded platter. This is an acrylic platter, and it just makes it lightweight, reduces static and, and noise and, and background noise and things like that. The ground floor is a lot quieter on the recordings. Going in the back, so you have to run from the back of the turntable down to your preamp, okay? So I have an external preamp. Right now it's running to my receiver. So what you have to do is take the output of the phono preamp and run it to your audio interface. So let me, let me go and do that. Okay, so I just connected a 15-foot cable, RCA cable, to the back of my phono preamp on the preamp out. And that runs along the floor behind the desk to... Um, it's going to run into the inputs of my Focusrite. So let me set that up. I got these RCA to TRS connectors. Actually, RCA to TS connectors. It's a quarter-inch adapter. And that's going to go on the input of the Focusrite audio interface. You know, you don't have to use a Focusrite, but <clears throat> that's the one I have. It's a 2i4. Really, anything with two inputs for stereo left and right. Okay, so now we're in uh, Reaper, and I created a new project. I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it DAF Punk Random Access Memories. All right. Um, create a new track and in Reaper by default tracks are either mono or stereo depending on how you use them so um, whatever inputs you set it to so hit the record button the arm button I should say and set the input to stereo input one two all right and as we saw before I set the volume levels to or the input gain to both uh, the same exact gain almost so you know that's going to be important that you're that you're balanced left and right so the next thing you're gonna do is pop the record onto the record player. Once it's on and ready to go, um, don't drop the needle yet. You just hit record, okay? And then drop the needle. And you wanna make sure you're not clipping it all. 
If you're clipping, that's bad. You could always turn the volume up, but you can't always turn it down. And I can't play that for you because uh, I'm just turning the volume down. It's still recording, but <clears throat> um, I don't want to get any copyright issues. As you can see here, the the volume level is pretty high. It's up, it's going to negative three dB. It's a little higher than I would have uh, suggested. Maybe drop it down lower and then normalize the volume. But this is working out pretty well. So we're gonna let this play through, and after it's done, I'm gonna show you how to cut the files up and export them as FLAC files. So stay tuned. Okay, so while this plays, you're just going to sit back and relax and enjoy the music. And while it's going on, there's not much to do but just monitor your levels. Make sure you're not clipping anywhere. If you are clipping, you're going to want to pretty much turn down the input gains on your preamp and start over because you don't want the, the levels to be too hot, otherwise it'll sound pretty horrible. What you want to do is wait till side A is done and when it's over, just easily just flip the record, but leave the recording going. And we're gonna cut the file up when we're done, but we'll get to that when it's time. Guys, record music that you really enjoy to vi from vinyl to your computer because you're gonna have to sit there and listen to it in real time. And if it's not something that you enjoy listening to, it's really not worth the effort in the first place. So uh, just sit back and enjoy this process. Now the album's finally done, I put the cover back on the record player. And now we're gonna dive into Reaper and chop that file up into uh, different songs and export them to Flax. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay everyone, so now we're in Reaper and um, I had gone ahead, right ahead of you and done some of this work for you um, <clears throat> already. And I've gotten half about, a little more than halfway through this album and um, let me show you my technique. First, I deleted all the parts of the song that are needle drops and not music. So you just delete those out of the audio track. Um, and then you select the entire, uh, every track here, every clip here, I should say. You select every clip and um, you want to make it loud enough because when you record it through your audio interface, you may not have set the input gain exactly the max, which is probably a good thing. <clears throat> so what you just do is you just select everything and go to item, take, no, sorry, item, item processing, normalize item, common gain. <clears throat> That'll put everything up to the right volume. Then what you do is you make selections based on each individual track. So. <clears throat> If you're not sure where each track starts and ends, which you probably don't, there's a, there's a handy little trick that I use, and that's you going into Discogs. If you go into Discogs, you can create an account actually and collect all, all your records, put all your record collection up in Discogs, and it's kind of a handy way to keep track of the value of your collection. I'll get into that in another video. Oh, by the way, guys, if you like this video and you think it's being useful to you, please click the like button. Um, what you do is you go to the record and you look down at the bottom barcode and not the one with the price tag on it, but the actual barcode built into the, the jacket. And it, on there is a number. And you just type that whole number into the search of Discogs, right? And it comes up with the actual pressing of your actual record. So there's many different versions and prints of your album. It could be a CD, it could be a tape, it could be a record. And, and there's many different pressings and, and distributions of this. So you want the right one. So. Here's mine for, for Daft Punk Random Access Memories. And you'll see exactly how long each song is in the order of the songs and the names. So that's very useful looking at the length of the song to know where to, where to start and end your, your, your tracks. So let's start at track 10 where I left off. Uh, <clears throat> go right to the beginning of the side and track 10 would be 
Motherboard. Okay, so we're gonna copy the name of the track. And that's five minutes and 41 seconds. So what you do is you just start at the beginning and make a selection for five minutes and 41 seconds. And then you can see at the bottom left, there is a time indicator. And that's about five minutes and 41 right there. You right mouse click at the top of the selection and say create region from selection. And then what you do is you edit the region and paste in the name of the song. And there you go, you have a region that is representative of that song in the track. And you just continue to do that to the end of the record. So this one is 4 minutes and 39 seconds. And you want to make sure, even though the time might say particular length, 439, you want to make sure you're actually at the right part of the song because a lot of vari variables can throw off where the song starts and ends, including the speed of the record player and everything like that. So you kind of want to listen to what you're, where you're starting and ending the song and make, make adjustments accordingly. Okay, that wraps up making the regions. Now what we want to do is export these regions as songs that you can listen to in a media player. So what you want to do is go File, Region Render Matrix. And then what you want to do is select all the tracks. So let's come across here and highlight all of those. Then you can go File, Render. Okay, coming into the Render to File window, you want to give it a file name that makes sense. So I do project region number dash region. Um, that gives it the file name that you want and the project is the folder name. Now make sure that the sample rate is at the level you want it to be at. Uh, one key thing, change the uh, format to FLAC. FLAC is compressed version of WAVE but it doesn't lose any of the sound quality. It is a lossless format so it will just be a smaller file. Uh, I do data compression slowest because it's really not that slow anyway. Uh, that just means that it's going to be a smaller file than uh, the fastest data compression. But you're not going to lose any sound quality. Um, when you do that, you just click apply and render, render 13 files. And then you sit back and wait for that to render. And you just continue to wait as the files render. Okay, there we go. We got this files exported. Let's close this. Save your project. Exit Reaper. Going to um, Explorer, you will see that they're all flag files, but they're not tagged. So very briefly, I'm just going to walk you through what I use. I use an app called Picard by Music Brains. Simply drag the files to the unclustered files area. So just select all your songs. And now you can go, I think it's lookup. And it kind of does a half half bit of a job trying to match the songs. So what you do is you just uh, drag the songs to where they belong. Okay, so you want to get the right pressing too. So you just do other versions and I am the two times vinyl and there we go. That's it. And then you click save and that will if you have your preferences configured properly, it should save and rewrite the files exactly and rename the files the way that you want. Once that's done, you take the files that are exported and uh, renamed from Picard and you just put them in your music library wherever you like to save those. And for your listening enjoyment, they will be at a high bit rate, they'll be compressed losslessly, and they will have high resolution audio from uh, however good of a quality the record the record player, the preamp, um, the audio interface, and everything, your whole chain, but however good of a quality that is, that's how good of a quality that you're gonna hear at playback time. So the more you invest in that, the more value you're gonna get out of your playback. So um, if you like this video, and if you found it helpful, please like like this video. But uh, if, you, if you want more content like this in the future, please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. And I'm happy to do more videos like this in the future. So stay tuned. Thank you.